Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of interpenetration. So in this video we're going to follow on from our previous video on the setting up of inclined solids and we're going to tackle a full leaving certificate higher level question which is going to be the 2009 um, leaving cert higher question. So let's just look at the question to start with. We're going to Here we have just the graphical part of the question giving us all our dimensions and the setup of two solids. So we have one solid which is a square prism with a little point at the top and our second solid is an inclined square based prism which is going to cut through it. So from the dimensions that we're given we can see we have a scale of 1 is to 10 and we're going to be able to set up the plan view of our original or main body to start with. So using an angle of 60 degrees and a length of 65 millimeters on your sheet we're able to draw in our square like so and then just join the diagonals to locate the central point and then we can draw the front elevation by just projecting straight up and we know the height of our sides here is 55 millimeters so that's the sides like that we can continue on the central point there the apex and up 30 millimeters join it up to give us the elevation of our main body of the object so the next thing we want to do is look at drawing in the prism. So the prism here, the inclined prism, is going to be at an angle of 30 degrees. And in any of these questions, you're always going to be giving a starting or a leading edge to, to work with. So we don't know the position of this edge here or this edge here, but we do know the position of this edge here like that. So we can just locate that point there, you can see at the corner and draw in a line of 30 degrees. The length doesn't matter for the moment and um, all that's going to do is locate us the first point on our profile here. So our profile is this point here, that's the point that we've now found. So we can draw in our square prism like that, our profile. We know the angle is 85 so because it's a square this edge here and this edge here are going to be parallel. So the angle of this guy is 85 which you can measure with your protractor. There it is, go perpendicular to that and we can draw in the uh, square profile like that and when you have the profile drawn in your best bet is just to label it up straight away to make life a little bit easier for it um, now let's just have a look at what we're doing here just in 3d as well just to kind of get across what this profile actually represents so here we have our objects like so i've just drawn in the prism to start with just so it'll be easier to see and what we're doing essentially is we're taking our profile like that on a little auxiliary plane and what we're doing is we're hinging that out. So that's where, what we end up seeing here. We end up seeing the hinged out version of our profile. And just if you notice there where each of our edges start and where they finish. Edge number one hinges out and becomes edge number one here. Three here like so. So when we look at our profile here, one is actually at the back of the object, three is at the front of the object, two is at the top, four is on the underside the object so it's quite important that you know what way it's orientated because we're going to need that a little bit later on so I'll just repeat that there just so to highlight that so you can see there is one and two three and it's hinging like so so if we were to look in at our uh, front elevation well, this is what we're actually seeing so that's exactly what we have here and you can see our profile like so actually still corresponds with each of our edges. So now we've located these edges that we had missing at the start. So we're able to just take them from our profile and just continue them down. And I'm, if you look at the question, the object here is trimmed like so. So we're not going to worry about it being trimmed for the moment. We'll worry about that afterwards. So for the moment we just are happy to have found each of our edges. Um, and I'm just going to draw in the, uh, just shade in just to show you the, this is the edges of our prism as we would have it there like so. So the next thing we want to do then is take our elevation and we want to work down here into our plan view. So we want to set up the plan view of our prism. So like with our elevation, we'll always be given a leading edge or a way to position our prism or a solid in our plan view. And you can see this is the edge that we have here in our plan view. So the back edge is the one that we're told comes from this corner. So we can locate the corner and we can draw in our edge like so. And let's just take a look at our object like so. So here we have our object like that and ha you can see the back point is at point number one. So that's what we were saying before and you can just see as I rotate it around there's number one. And really the main thing, the main issue or the main problem that we have to solve when it comes to the uh, plan view is well, what distance is edge number two or edge number four or edge number three away from that um, leading edge that we start with, edge number one. So that's what we're going to try and locate. And 
one of the handy ways to do this is um, maybe just when you get the question at the start, a little tip if I could give you would be try and orientate your your profile here to your plan view on the sheet itself. So if you're given the paper, take the paper and just to start with, draw in a line going through your edge here. So if you know what edge one number one in your plan view, draw a line through that like so. Draw a line perpendicular to it, so 30 degrees in this case, and just draw a little extension line like that. So you can see number one is going to be at the back of the object, but then number two is going to be the next point, number four and number three at the top, and just correspond that with the back, so with the plan view. So one is like so, there's one, next is two, next is four, next is three. So it just helps you kind of connect the two together like so. Um, you can see I also extended this guy on here like that, um, because our object was um, cut at the top. That's often done just to just to kind of confuse matters. I just continued that edge on just to make it easier to to label up. And say so if you just sketch that in on the uh, the question, the sheet that you're given, um, it does help an awful lot to visualize the object. So let's just go back to our 3D here and just see what we're trying to achieve. So if we go to our 3D, I'm just going to draw in this little diamond shape here, this kind of plan view of our auxiliary, like that. We don't need to draw it on our sheet, I'm just going to do it just to represent or make it a little bit easier to visualize. As I say, we want to locate the distances of each of our edges, like so. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my edge that I know, so I know I have this edge here, and I'm going to imagine that is my reference. So everything is going to be measured off of that. So, same thing applies up here. I'm going to draw in my line here. This is my datum line. This is the line I'm going to measure my distances from. So I'm going to take my distance of 2 from that line and I'm going to transfer it down here and that locates me the distance that where 2 is here. I'm going to do the same with 4 as the next point. There's 4. I'm going to do the same with 3 and there's 3 there like that. And that's each of my edges drawn in. And then I can just project them along like so, locating my edges. So I have the depth here in my plan view located. And that's probably the hardest um, thing or the thing that catches most students. Um, being able to work out that one then is followed by two, followed by four, followed by three. Um, because that, you know, that ha imagine you have to imagine it being hinged around. So that's our object like so. And it's probably just worthwhile at this stage mentioning that, well, really what we're looking at here is, you know, transferring an auxiliary up here down to our plan view. And remember, we go one, two rules. So if I wanted to get the measurements for this, say it, we take the distance of 1 off the xy line here, well, like if I measured back here, well, that would be the actual distance where my x line would be drawn in. Now we don't usually do that because in the question we're not usually given a specific distance here, we can place the object as far away from the xy or as close to the xy as we like, so it, you know, we don't necessarily need to do it, but it's just m maybe nice to understand that that is what we're actually looking at. Um, we're okay to measure off of our reference line here, but if you wanted you could put in the proper position of our x1, y1 line. So the next part of our question then is to try and tackle the uh, cut of our object. So we're going to originally treat the object as if it's uncut and then we're going to work out these cuts um, afterwards. So let's look at the object from say the underside first of all. So we'll see where the object hits the ground. So we can see it makes this diamond shape like so. So we're going to find that first of all and then we're going to cut up our object. So the way we do that is we take each of our points, so each of our edges, so edge number 2 is going to be just projected down to edge number 2 here. We do the same with edge number 3, and edge number 4, and edge number 1. And that gives us our diamond shape there for our uncut object. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually slice it up. So you can see if we come out 25 millimeters here, there's our cut, and we can project him down, and that gives us our edge here like that. And that's why we needed to do it uncut first of all, because otherwise we wouldn't have had this line here and this line here. So now we have the the width of this guy here, and we can just fill in then the rest of the object exactly what we have. And you can see I haven't continued him into the point here, because that's going to be absorbed into the uh, main body of the solid. So that's our um, base there of our object. Next we're going to do is we're going to take the top portion of our object like so. So I'm going to take my distance across from the apex and there's the location of my cut, like so. I'm going to project my point down, like so, and I'm going to give me my distance there. 
like so I'm going to project my point down here onto 2 to give me the location of this point here and if you'll notice as well one little last little trick to maybe throw some students is that a common mistake there would be that students would take that edge and join it up to here because it's you know it, it looks so inviting but if you look at the question make sure you carefully look at the question it goes to this point here so we have to be able to locate where this point is here and let's just look at the question and see how do we do that so here's our object here's our object cut and if I move myself around you can see well there's the point that I'm trying to find here and that's on this edge here wh between the edge number one at the back and f uh, two at the top of the object so that's the surface that that is actually going to be on so what we do is we actually continue our point along like so onto the edge number one and drop it down so there it is there we draw in our line where that crosses here now that's our point located so that's one last little thing just to maybe throw say the students to go along um, so that's um, one last little point um, now with that we've pretty much the setup of the question and at this stage you've actually passed the question so you could have met all the little tricks that have been drawn in front of you and um, the interpenetration or locating the lines of interpenetration I'm going to tackle in the next video because there's two different methods that we can use for it so I'm going to look at both methods and then so students can pick and choose whichever method they feel the most comfortable with but uh, we'll just fast forward just to give you an idea of what that would look like and you can see part of our original main body of our object is absorbed so that's why I drew it in in construction so there is the setup for our 2009 higher level question there's quite a bit in it but remember this is what we're moving towards so this is um, I suppose the end game really um, as always um, I hope this has been of some help to you and stay tuned for more videos